Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As happy with IK. Hope you're all doing good. So today's topic is a continuation of our uh, previous video related to the uh, WM and PP integration. So in the first part of this topic, uh, we actually discussed about the master data settings and the configuration that basically it relates uh, or integrates in the warehouse management module with the production planning module. So in this topic, uh, we are going to discuss and uh, uh, run a scenario uh, on creating the production orders and how uh, these production orders, uh, you know, they create the transfer requirements uh, for the warehouse related uh, components. Okay, so here uh, we are going to create a production order for a total quantity of uh, 10 pieces with the scheduling type of uh, current date. And if you are interested to know about the scheduling types, uh, I've already uploaded a video on this particular topic on the types of uh, scheduling and also how the dates uh, in the production order are calculated. So maybe you can check uh, from the playlist. And now if you go into the component uh, overview of this production order, we can see that there are three components. And here uh, we have also assigned the storage locations. So the, sto the storage location 0001 uh, and uh, 0088. So the uh, 001 storage location, it is basically managed uh, through inventory management. And whereas the 0088, uh, this is a warehouse managed uh, storage locations. So please note that if you want to include any components uh, in the production orders uh, to be part of the transfer requirement or the transfer order. So you have to make sure that the storage location assigned to it uh, in the component overview, it belongs to a warehouse managed uh, location. And along with that, uh, you also need to make sure that the operation num uh, that you have in the production order. So let's say here I'm using operation number 10 with the work center R-A20. And in this work center, uh, we should assign the supply a area. So in our previous topic, we have already covered about the uh, importance of the supply area and also uh, the creation of a control cycle. So maybe you can uh, refer to that if you want to have a more uh, detailed uh, overview uh, on the production supply area. So the operation to which uh, the component assignment has been done and also the component assigned uh, to these operations should be assigned with a WM managed uh, storage location. Only in that condition you will have the component included as part of the transfer request created while re uh, releasing the order. So here the operation number is uh, 10 and if we go into the component overview we can see that the uh, component uh, with item 60 it has been assigned to operation 10. Okay so with this we understand that only this particular component which is managed with the WM location has been assigned to operation 10 which also has a work center that has been enabled with the production supply area so only for this component we will have the transfer requirement uh, created once we process uh, for the steps and also please see that i have uh, enabled the backflash indicator so this is an optional setting if you want to consume these components during the confirmation of the operation, then you can set the backflash indicator. If not, you can just remove it if you want to do a manual postings. So now let's uh, uh, save this production order. Okay. So here we have the production order created ending with uh, 6765. Now I go into the change mode. And from the header menu, if we click on the header menu go to and then you will find this option for WM staging uh, pull list. So if I click on that we see that we do not have any WM staging uh, created so far for those components. So you see this right and it says that the list cannot be displayed. Why? Because the system status is still as created. So we have not yet re released uh, the production order. So where do we define these settings like the, trans the creation of the transfer requirement, should it be at the time of uh, creating the production order or maybe while releasing the production order. So that will be assigned in the 
uh, configuration of the production scheduling profile. So if I go into the configuration of the production scheduling profile, let's say I go to OPKP and here plant and the production scheduling profile. So if we go into the configuration of this down below, we have this setting for the transport. So here for the WM request, I have assigned the value as X. So X basically stands for the creation of transfer requirements while releasing the uh, production order. So if you don't want to use the uh, WM process or maybe the creation of uh, TRs or the transfer requirements, so then you use this uh, blank indicator, right? So it means that there will be no creation of transfer requirements upon releasing the production order. And now uh, if you want to have the transfer requirements and the transfer order, uh, both to be created upon re releasing the production order, then you can use this option one, right? So we have uh, the flexibility over there. So based on this setting, I, again, if I just uh, go back to the production order view, yeah, so now I have to release this production order to have the uh, transfer requirements created. So I'll do a release and then click on save. Again, go back to the production order. Now to the header menu, go to and WM staging pull list. So now you can see that we can see uh, the transfer requirement created by clicking on the display option. So let me show that again. Now click on go to WM staging list and then click on display. So we have not executed the uh, WM simulation manually. So it has been created uh, automatically while releasing the production order. So we see that this is the pick part and that has been assigned to this particular uh, operation 10 and the work center. And now, uh, I mean, we also can see the storage location, but what is the number uh, that we have for the transfer requirements created? So for that, you have to click on this documents for order icon. And now you can see the TR number that has been created. So this is my TR number. So the purpose of this transfer requirement is that it is basically created for the replenishment for production. So we are basically moving the inventory from our warehouse to the production storage location. So after that, we do the consumption through 261 movement. But initially, we are just moving it from the warehouse to the uh, production storage location. Okay. So for that, we have the replenishment movement type in uh, as uh, 319. And this is... Uh, used by standard uh, to perform the uh, replenishment uh, process. So if you click on the uh, TR number, we can see the complete uh, information about the uh, storage type, which is nothing but the order of the, I mean, the production order number. And then you have the uh, type of storage. So this is all part of the WM configurations. So here we have maintained it as uh, 100, which is basically for the production supply. And then we have the material. And this is basically the component. And then the uh, TR quantity, the reservation, and the reservation item number. So if we go into the processing status of this TR, we can see that we do not have a transfer order created yet. So now the next step is to convert this TR to a TO. Okay. So now let me uh, let me go to the conversion process. So now to create a transfer order, there are a few uh, methods. One is the manual conversion of a TR to TRIVO and the other one is to convert the TR into a TO in the background itself. So I'm using the manual method uh, through the transaction LT04. And here uh, I got the Veros number and also the TR number, right? So which is 376. So let me check that. Yeah, it is 376. So I go back to this transfer order. And then we have the storage type. Now save it. And we have the transfer order number 323 created. So now we, are, we have to uh, confirm this particular transfer order. Only then the staging is going to happen. So now I go to this uh, from the header menu, transfer order, confirm and then the transfer order. So this is the TO number. 
and then uh, you I mean this item will be checked uh, automatically and you have this storage bin uh, information and then the type as 002 so this is where it has been stocked at the moment so let me open the stock statistics for this component I'll go to LS24 LS24 transaction it gives you the stock uh, available for the material in the corresponding warehouse so here we can see that uh, we have sufficient stocks uh, in the corresponding uh, uh, storage types and the storage bins so here we have the storage bin uh, as 010101 and if I go back to this uh, confirm TO screen I can see that the, this is the storage bin and this is the storage type so basically we are moving it from here of I um, mean for a quantity of 10 pieces so right now in this bin we have a stock of uh, 46 and uh, yeah we have a requirement here uh, for 10 pieces which has been picked uh, from our transfer requirement so now the available stock is 36 so after uh, we post uh, the confirmation of the transfer order let's take a look at these revised uh, figures so i'm going in to the transfer order and then confirm internally and save it so now the confirmation of the transfer order has been completed let's refresh the screen okay let's go back and execute one more time so now you can see that the stock has been updated to the actual figures so initially we had the available stock as a 46 and the picked quantity as 10 so now the quantity has been re reduced upon confirming the transfer order so now the stock has been moved uh, from this various location uh, 0088 uh, to the production storage location so this is how uh, we basically perform the staging uh, of uh, the components from uh, WM location uh, to the replenishment location to the uh, production orders so now if we go into the details of this uh, uh, production order let me open the production order so going back to the production order 6765 and go to the documented goods movements we see that the documented goods movements were not updated uh, with those transactions that we have uh, posted earlier with the staging why because it is not yet consumed into the production order it has been just moved to the replenishment location so for that let's do a goods issue process now let's go to the consumption of uh, the raw material uh, let's go with uh, the transaction MyGo to perform the goods issue so I choose this goods issue production order and then the order number so here we see uh, those three components which were part of the production order let me just pull up the material numbers uh, for your reference okay there you go we have these okay so again the consumption is still happening from the storage location 0088 okay so now I'm going to check all of them let's do a check okay and now post the transaction so before posting it let me show you the stock that we have here so in, in LS24 the Veros managed location we have an available stock of 36 we have an available stock of 36 right in the same way if I go to the MMB which is my inventory managed location let's take a look on the stock statistics yeah so here we have uh, an unrestricted use of uh, 196 uh, pieces where the 10 pieces has been reserved against the production order that we are going to process now okay and this is the the WM location and this is the IM location the inventory managed location so now let's uh, do the posting post okay now the material document has been posted and if I go back to the stock uh, statistics initially for the LS24 for the Vero stocks we still see the stock as 36 because we have not actually 
consumed uh, anything from the uh, warehouse type as 002 right so initially we moved it already from the warehouse location to the inventory managed location now we are going to check the inventory stocks uh, i mean at the inventory uh, managed location so do a refresh and now we can see that the stock has been reduced uh, in this particular storage location from 196 to 186 so those 10 pieces were basically consumed after the 261 has been posted uh, against that production order so now if i go into the details of uh, the production order uh, in the goods movement uh, view let me go to documented goods movements so now we can see the 261 movement updated so during the staging of the materials from the wm location to the production storage location there is no consumption it is only a replenishment of stock from one stock category to the other stock uh, category but only with the 261 we are actually posting the consumption of Uh, the components uh, against the production order so this is how it basically works and now if i have to go to the details of uh, the material master for the component let me show you that so here i have assigned uh, the default supply area so in the mrp2 of the mrp2 view of the material master you have this option uh, to assign a default uh, production supply area and also you have the option to enter the production storage location and the storage location for external uh, procurement by default uh, for these uh, raw materials or any kind of a material right so those storage locations will be pulled into the production order or the process order automatically based on the default values that we assign in the material master